in to the extent that I can, uh, is that this resolution was presented as being member initiated, and it was not. It was initiated by Michael Borowin. He had the idea to pass this resolution. He then contacted a couple of sections in the ASA, and then those sections presented the resolution to the council. And then the council said, this is member initiated. But it was, in fact, the president of the ASA who first launched the initiative. So I thought it was a bit dubious that that apparently somehow had to be uh, kept hidden. Uh, once it was presented to the membership, it was not only presented in the sense of, yeah, you know, there's a section that uh, sent this resolution to this. What do you think about it? At the same time, we were informed that the council had already voiced unanimous strong support for this resolution. So it was not kind of like, what do you think about it? We think it's wonderful. So that's apparently the version of democracy in the ASA. Needless to say, this resolution passed, so as it well should, of course. Uh, my issues that, that I raised with this, and I wrote about it because I intervened in this uh, discussion process, if you will, through letters that I uh, submitted at the time. Also, at that time, I think I already had my safe sociology uh, website, and I also maintained the blog. That blog, actually, in the meantime, has been deleted, but uh, the website is still active. And I, through my blogs, I revealed some of these issues because at that time, my idea was, and I think to some extent my idea still is, although I'm much more, uh, much less optimistic about this now, that as soon as long as I can just tell people what is really going on it will have an effect on how they feel about this particular development of public sociology, in sociology. Uh, sadly, up until now, that has not been the case. It kind of is reminiscent of what criminologists know about the death penalty. At some point, it was believed that as, soon as, as long as people knew a lot about the death penalty, that they would be more and more likely to oppose it. That turns out not to be true, actually. See, because people become more and more sophisticated about why they oppose it or not. <laughs> So it's kind of a little bit similar there. Um, so what I want to talk about is what are some, so like I said, I'll talk about the history. I'll also talk about what are some of the consequences of these developments for normative and scholarly debates alike. And basically this is kind of the summary statement of my position. And this is also what I wrote at the time these resolutions were going on, is that I felt that these are deeply moral questions, normative political questions which are very important and which I think should not be relegated to some professional organization who is just by nature of that particular organization not to be involved in such matters. So it's not, let's say sometimes my criticisms, my criticisms have typically mis been misunderstood, but that's okay. Uh, it, it, my, my, my primary criticism, I would actually say, is not just to save a professional sociological association from engaging itself in non-sociological issues. Furthermore, and I think more important is, I'm also trying to safeguard a political normative discourse from not being perverted by some pseudo-sociological intellectual scholarly infiltration. So what I'm saying is, if you're for or against the war, it's fine. If you think you can back this up sociologically, it's not so fine. And indeed, you should look, I don't have it uh, with me, you should look at the wording. The wording is, is like, like I remember the one on same-sex marriages, the wording is something like, sociologists have long studied systems of inequality, and they know blah, 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 therefore we're against it. Listen, I don't need sociology to be for or against same-sex marriages. You know what I mean? I think I've got my values, my, my politics, and so on. So in that sense, I'm a bit Habermas influenced in these, in these matters you know, in terms of that there are different systems of rationality that apply to different discourse, political discourse, theoretical discourse, and so on. So that, that, that is basically my concern. Then, furthermore, in revealing the true and hidden, largely hidden intentions of public sociology, I actually make the argument that public sociology, as it has been introduced in this specific context, is neither public nor sociology. So let's talk about a little bit more. 
First of all, and that's the basic argument that I make about the, pu the public sociology as it has been uh, introduced by Michael Dorway and, and some uh, people uh, related to him, primarily by him actually, because in the context of his work, uh, I hope you don't think this is personal or something, and some people have said, you know, are you personal? I do not know Michael Dorway. I uh, have nothing personal to say about him. It, I even, incidentally, do not have anything to say about his scholarship, which I also do not know, like his work, manufacturing consent and so on. I do not know. I, it's about his, his professional position, his position about uh, the sociological profession. So I hope it's to, to be understood that way. But it is directed at him because he was so instrumental in launching this. Uh, one of the ways in which he did was actually by giving a lot of talks all over the world, actually, uh, which of course was done by the ASA and funded uh, by the ASA. First of all, what did I reveal? That if you look at his writings, and I've read, I think, just about every word he wrote on public sociology, with maybe some exceptions of the very recent stuff, you see that he presents public sociology in a rather general context. Public sociology is about bringing sociology to the public, right? Public sociology is about dialogue, it's about debate, it's about talking about issues beyond the boundaries of the academic set. Right? You look at some of his writings that he published in a more limited, uh, let's say a more specialized literature, such as the journal Critical Sociology, such as the newsletter of the Marxist Sociology <coughs> Organization, then you see that the picture is indeed different. And then you indeed see, which is my basic concern, that his version of public sociology is actually a way to bring a particular kind of politics, a particular kind of activism into sociology. And I make a big distinction, or rather there is a big distinction, and I make a big fuss about the distinction between an activist sociology or sociological activism. An activist sociology is a sociology that is infused by activism, whereas a sociological activism is an activism that is fused, aided by sociological insights. You look at the literature, what does he say then? Oh, that Burroway seeks to bring in critical wins that are related to justice and rights. And he admits that the ASA has ventured into political date, uh, debate and waded even further into political debate with an anti-Iraq war resolution. So in this context, he is rather specific about the political intentions about public sociology rather than, I think, masquerading it in some of the more you know, general audience-oriented uh, uh, works as a sociological issue. I further argue, and uh, sadly I know this very, very well, that there is actually no debate about public sociology. Uh, I was reading um, in preparation of this talk, I've been uh, Googling a little bit, right, so that I would know a little bit about public sociology in the United Kingdom. And I uh, read, I think it's at the Strat, excuse me, the pronunciation, Strathclyde uh -huh. Department. Anybody here from Strathclyde? Yeah, one person, very good. Okay, very good. Oh, two people, it's even better. So that, uh, that's where uh, Burroway gave a talk uh, two years ago, right, and I saw the video, obviously, or listened to the video. <coughs> and uh, I also saw that on the website that his, um, his talk was uh, introduced as, you know, Michael Burroway by doing this sparked a real debate. That is really remarkable because somebody should really give me uh, some empirical indications of what this debate exactly is. I think there is nothing uh, that is less debated than public sociology. Uh, of course, there is a lot of people who talk about public sociology, but they don't seem to really understand what it is that they're talking about. Furthermore, the contours of debate let's say the range of possible opinions in the debate are extremely narrow. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, I, I, have you come across the uh, 40th anniversary issue of Sociology in the Journal of the British Sociological um, Association, yeah. which was concerned with the public places of sociology? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And also the British Journal of Sociology has a special issue.